Well, so you hate being compared to girl races? Yeah, pretty much. I just don't like being labelled as a girl. I just go out and want to be the best driver I can, really. Um, you know, like Carl Larson, he's known as the best driver. I want to be known as the best driver, not just the best girl racer. Yeah. Has that always <laughs> been your outlook on it? Yeah, like... Even in quarter midgets, like, I never saw myself different as being a girl. I just went out and thought, yeah, I'm a race car driver. Like, you put the helmet on, no one knows what's underneath that, except for the name on the bonnet, really. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've, I've always, I don't know, there's, like, I don't know, yeah, this can sound weird saying it, but there's <laughs> obviously, there's a bunch of girls that really can race that aren't yeah, any definitely. different to the blokes, and I've never seen a problem with it or seen any different of it, like, you know, it's like, you're all strapping on the lid and you're all going out there in a sprint car or a midget, whatever. Like, you're all out there legitimately equal. Yeah. Like, it's not anything different. No, like, if you're a fan on the hill and, like, it's your first time there, you're not going to know what's a girl leading, really. Yeah. You're just seeing them as, oh, they're probably the best one on the track right now. So, yeah, I don't, like, give a credit to the girls who are really good at it, you know. I think it is a bit tougher being a girl just because of your build. Like, you don't have that muscular body, but... Um, yeah, I just go out and be a race car driver. That's just that's just what you want to you want to be. Yeah. So obviously, like, there's a lot of history in speedway with your family, especially in the speed car ranks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So obviously, my dad raced speed cars for pretty much his whole life and then obviously my two pops um Ian the Fly Lewis he did speed cars he had a dip in the sprint cars which I'm pretty sure I had some success in obviously I wasn't around but also my other pop Wayne Pierce um he had a lot of success in the speed cars as well and then both my pops teamed up in the end when my other pop retired um big pop Wayne Pierce <laughs> when he retired you know my other pop, Poppy Fly, he drove for pop for a while and, you know, they teamed up for a bit there. So there is a lot of history. And then, obviously, I've got my cousin, Caleb Mills, who's driving speed cars now. I've got my uncle, Squizzy Travis Mills, racing. Um, so I've definitely got a lot of um, good races to look up to and it's cool that I have that in my family as well. Yeah. So you would have heard a few stories about stuff that's happened back in the <laughs> I've day. I've heard a lot of good and bad <laughs> stories, a lot of old school stories. I love the old school stories though, like they were badass. Yeah. Like that's one way to put it, it was badass the way they went about their racing, you know. You hear about my pops, like American trips, it's like how cool is that? Like you just want to go out and do it really. Yeah. yeah. I always like sort of think it's like a different time that they did it too. Like, you know, you sort of, I don't know. I don't want to say that they're this old, but you're probably like sending letters or something mm. like that. Like I know a few old school guys who like would send letters to drivers to come to Australia and stuff like that. And it's mm. like, you know, now we could just pick up the phone and, <laughs> you know, at worst case is send an email or, you know, like you just directly contact someone in the comments on Instagram. Like, yeah. you know, like you can make connections so easy like that. Which, Definitely. You know, those guys back then, they didn't have that sort of, you know, that structure wasn't there to do it. Like, yeah. They're sort of literally going over there on like a wing <laughs> kind of thing. Like, you know, yeah, it's pretty pretty wild how, you know, they get that sort of stuff done back in the day. Yeah. So. It's pretty cool to hear how they came about it all. Like, it's like literally you can go on social media now and go, oh, I like this team. These guys seem cool and send them a message and they might let you crew for a weekend if you go over and now... But, like, back when my pops were racing, you know, you'd fly over there, not know anyone. You show up with a race bag to this guy. You've ne you don't even know what he looks like. And you're like, yeah. you, you're the owner. But, yeah, it's just so different how they used to do it. And then they'd probably get drunk all night, meet all these guys. And then the next minute they're cool for them the next night. Like, it's just so easy nowadays, but also hard at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty funny. Like, Jamie Cobby was saying that he just went to California with his bag and he just went to the pits, was walking <laughs> up and down the pits like, hey, I'm a racer from Australia. This is what I can do. This is what I've won. Like, you know, it's like I can't picture anybody doing anything remotely close to that in this day and age. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like, it's like just so different. And like at least nowadays if you did approach a car owner, they could sort of look you up a bit more and look at your yeah. results where you probably could walk up to and go, oh, I'm a national title yeah. winner because they probably didn't hear anything from the ditch. Like, yeah. they're like, what's Australia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's anyone who's gone over there and just blagged their way into a <laughs> job. There'd have to be someone who's, Surely. who's, who's done it. Like, yeah. That'd be an interesting conversation to have. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, 
where did you start out in? Um, I started out in corner midgets. I I started running like my pop, Poppy Fly, he bought me a corner midget and I just ran that. You had to run them when you were five years old and I was like four, four and a half and he got me a quarter midget so he ran it out in like these streets at some factories and everything and I just ran some laps and then eventually I went to Backers Marsh, ran some laps just on my own because I was still too young and then once I turned five I went out in the field. Um, I started off pretty successful I think, you know, I had a couple wins in my first season and then, geez feels like a while ago now I can't remember how old you are to go to 120s but I moved up to 120s had some success there I think I got 10 feature wins in a row and some memorials and all that and then when you're 12 you um you go up to the 160s so I moved into them had some good battles in that as well obviously the driving style changes a little bit because you got that extra speed even though it's nothing compared to what I run now but back then it felt like a lot um and then I think we bought the Formula 500 when I was 12 or 13 and we just built it up, built it up. And then I think I had my first run when I was 13. I did like four races because COVID hit and then we went to New Zealand. So I only did four races and then um, we got power steering and that definitely helped me. And I got, you know, top fives here and there in my second season. And then the year, the off season of that one, um, we bought brand new motor, new chassis and everything. And then I just like, I just straight out the bat, I was pretty much winning feature wins. I was in the top three every night. Like, I think I really did like an apprenticeship in every um, stage I went through, um, especially in the formulas, you know, maybe the package we didn't have was so good, but I still feel like you need to do an apprenticeship as well, just to get used to everything. And I think having those disadvantages I guess with the other chassis and motor package we had I think that was pretty good for me as well just to learn and go through it all but once we got that new motor new chassis um pretty much got the speed week championship stampede championship feature wins here and there pretty much a top three every night unless it was a dnf or something went wrong and then this season I started in the formula 500 juniors um and got my second speed week championship and then obviously we moved into the midgets um domain giving me my first run which was really cool and here we are <laughs> yeah that, that was murray bridge wasn't it no what? my first one was at warnable oh, when hayden that, won yeah the you were in there yeah yeah, the yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I remember yeah. i thought it was murray bridge for some reason yeah that was my second one that yeah, was right. the first one in this car oh okay maybe yeah. that's what it was yeah 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 so you know you've obviously been lucky enough to learn you know, like throttle control and stuff like that through the 500 to where you're at now, jumping straight into the speed car? Yeah, I think um, quarter midgets also helped me with the smoothness. You know, Formula 500s and um, quarter midgets, you definitely have to keep them as straight as possible and just try and keep your momentum. Um, with the Formula 500s, I think that was really good to get some wing knowledge in me. Um, I'd like to go back to the wing side of it eventually. I think that was really good for me. Um, obviously, in the midget... That was a bit hard to get used to because you're really feeling the car. you really got to trust it. Um, these things can bite hard, so I'm going to try not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So what's the, um, well, by wing, do you mean 500 or um, something bigger? Anything. I think <laughs> I've still got some business to do in the senior form of 500s. I'd love to get an opportunity in that. Unfortunately, we had to sell it just to buy a new motor plant for the midget. It's sort of like... You've either got to have two mid packages in both of your vehicles or you've got to have one really big one. So it's sort of tossing up between do we want to go out and win races or do we want top fives every night? So we had to get rid of that. But I'd definitely like to go back to the wing side of Formula 500s and also look at some LSs, 360s, 410s, just anything I can really race in the wing side I'd love to do. I think it's really going to boost my um, racing. Yeah. <laughs> profile yeah, yeah i don't know i ran out of words there <laughs> <laughs> so is that i don't know there's a i know you so you've got a fair bit of spring car stuff in the family too though so it's not really a, a sore point to put a wing on top yeah essentially i think my dad and pop were a bit biased on the spring cars i think more just the racing wise they don't think the racing is so good compared to speed cars but you know poppy fly had a stint in spring cars he was really good at it i think I, I like them. I think it's just 
Oh, I've lost words again. I don't know. I, just, <laughs> I know what you're saying. I just, I'm, I, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure, like speedway people listening know. Yeah, what, like know what you mean. <laughs> I'm a speedway fan all over. I like any division really. Like late models are badass. Like I've run in that. I've just always got a soft spot for speed cars. Yeah. It's just how I was brought up, really, and I enjoy the racing. So that was like as a kid. I mean. As a kid, you're only 16 now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Still a kid. So it's like, yeah, you, know, you obviously grew up around the speed cars a lot more. Yeah, pretty much just speed cars my whole life, following my dad around. Um, yeah, both my pops were retired by then. Probably my uncle as well, following him around, just always involved in speed cars. Yeah, so that was definitely like, you knew as a like, young man that's where you wanted to be sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I always knew I wanted to end up in them. Not just because my family raced them, just because I thought they were so good to watch. Like, they produced some of the best racing you'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, that's definitely, well, what's the end game for you? Like, where do you want to, <laughs> where do you want to be at, like, as a racer? Um, uh, that's a good question to ask a 16-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> um... I don't know. Well, maybe you can look back on it and use the yeah, and say, maybe. Yeah, I've, I've done it. Or yeah, I'd really like to tick off um, running USAC. I think that's always been a long life dream. Um, my dreams might be a bit big, but I am still 16, so you never know. I'd like to do USAC. I'd definitely like to have at least like a full season in 410s just to say I did it. Um, yeah, just be able to race for multiple car owners, be able to race pretty much anything that runs dirt circles. Well, the good thing is that you're young enough to, to get all this stuff out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Not like you're looking back on the, the yeah, end of your career 40. again. You know, I know I should have didn't get to do it. But, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely, you know, the, all the possibilities are, are there for it. Mm. So, yeah. So, you had, you had a, like, okay, not not the worst and not, you know, probably the greatest season starting out in the speed car either, but, you know, it's a steep learning curve. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely an apprenticeship, as I said before. Um Definitely had some bad nights where dad probably looked at me and gone, what are you doing? And then probably had some good nights. But um, I guess that's the whole reason we sort of um, bought a new motor plant just to say like dad's like, mum and dad are giving me like every opportunity I can that they can give to me. Um, so it's really up to me now. So there's no excuses saying all oh, the motors just not doing enough it's all up to me now so that'll be a bit stressful but it's also um built my confidence up I guess you'd say you know the Sesco is getting a bit old but if it, if we didn't have the Sesco, I wouldn't have even ran this season we brought the new Fontana out for Eastern Creek blew it in hot laps and then that was sort of like what are we going to do for the rest of the season now so lost our good motor but now we've got a good motor for this season so confidence is definitely up but it's also still going to be an apprenticeship as well do you know what went wrong with the fontana <laughs> no, no idea no. it just yeah, <laughs> be, yeah it, it just blew up just, just, <laughs> just to say up <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah did you know that it was going or like no nah. it just went i mean i've never felt it but at least now i know what it feels like but yeah, yeah. i just saw smoke out of the side and the gauges are all facing down, so I was like, that can't be good. And then came in and Dad's got a rod bolt in his hand, rods, so uh, I don't think that's a good sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, was a, it was a lot of smoke, I remember, <laughs> I remember that, that, that much, yeah. Might make cool photos, but it's not very fun. <laughs> no, it's not very, not very cheap either. <laughs> so, yeah, so you're obviously not really, um, you obviously spent a lot of time on the road travelling for racing and stuff just from the get-go, haven't you? Yeah, um, I think mum and dad both want to get a lot of laps in me. I think that's a big thing with racing. You know, you look at America, they're doing like 100 shows a year and we're yeah. like, oh, we got 24 and like that's a good season for yeah. us. But that took a lot of travelling. Like we only went to Murray Bridge and Eastern Creek. That was as far as we got, but that was still some big trips. And like once I got into the midgets, we did every Murray Bridge show after that just because – they put on some good racing. Murray Bridge is a great track to learn on as well. Um, might not have had some good nights there, but it was still good to just be able to travel. You race with different guys. You're learning more craft. Um, but I think next season we're definitely going to try and travel a lot more and just try and compete in every race we can. So, like, how many... What's the most shows you've done, like, with the 500 in a season? Um... Because there's so many in Victoria to run the 500. Yeah, I know. I think Speed Week's... 
Speedweek's really good, and it's good there's, that there's speed like, cars are like going. Eight, eight there, or nah. Well, if seven? you do the seniors, you can do the speed week and then the dash for cash, which is like another three races the week after. So I guess it is about eight. But speed week this year was only four races for us. Right. So seniors get an extra night as well. Yeah. So if you're a senior, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the and like for people who don't sort of know too, like the difference between a junior and a, a senior. 500 is the it's just the injection manifold isn't it yeah it's just on the so we have to run carbies um in the seniors you can run carbs or electrician electric oh jesus injections <laughs> like anything you want and then we've got a restrictor plate on the intake as well yeah so yeah. it's it's a great like stepping stone you can just unbolt that and like put the injection on and you're into the, the next sort of your upper category sort of thing like yeah it seems to be such a great great way of doing it oh it's so good and it was just great timing for it to come out for me as well like when I was getting sort of at the top of the quarter midgets and like sort of looking for that in between between a quarter midget and a midget it was really good to have the formulas um so I think they had like four cars when I started and now you look at it speed week we got like a 24 car field like guys from WA Queensland like they all came down like it's a really good division I think um and it's definitely helped me in the midget a lot just the speed hasn't hit me so much you're just used to that speed like especially with the wing you get the wing speed and everything so I think that's been really good um but yes stepping from a quarter midget that's a 120 cc going to a um speed car would just be crazy like i don't think i'd be where i am right now <laughs> so like without the junior 500 you would have had to have looked at like a, a junior sedan or something like that yeah or, maybe or just, or i just think waited out for, yeah for the speed car yeah i think um dad was trying to talk to the compacts and lowering the age a bit just because that would have been a good stepping stone otherwise i think we would have done compacts or something like that just to give it a little bit of a stepping stone but yeah, it worked out good in our favour. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, I don't know. It's hard to compare it, but it's the way it goes in America sort of thing. Like, with their... I mean, you look at what they start with in their, their carts up through to, you know, like outlaw carts and then to the micro stuff. Like, you know, it seems to... It makes sense, really, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what... The front wheel drive junior stuff, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't... Mm, it doesn't do it for me. I just... I, I'm sure there's stuff that you can learn, but it's like, what, what do you, what do you take from it? <laughs> yeah. Like everything after that goes to like real drive stuff and <laughs> or open wheel and stuff. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Not sure. <laughs> so new, new power plant for this upcoming season. Yeah. Uh, we just got a GRD. It was the one that um, my uncle Squizzy Mills was running, running. Um, so yeah, I'm very grateful that my mum and dad invested in that. I think that'll definitely help us this season. Um, definitely going to give me a lot of confidence. Um, I think it opens us up to do a lot of more travelling as well. I think we'd like to get to Perth for the Aussie title and obviously need a good power plant for there. Otherwise, there's no yeah. point really. Even um, Eastern Creek, I wouldn't bother going there if you didn't have a good power plant. It's so big. But yeah, it'll definitely be a lot easier to travel with just knowing that we've got a good power plant under our hood. Yeah, so you no know schedule put together so far or anything? Not really. Um, we'll definitely do all the Vic shows, obviously. We'd like to get to Murray Bridge for most of their runs. Um, New South Wales for a couple of their shows. I'd like to get to Toowoomba. That looks really cool. Um, see if we can fit a show in here and there. And then, obviously, we'll try and get to Perth. We we hope to get there. You know, you've got a shot for an Aussie title. You're always in for a chance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Toowoomba's, um, they're just killing everything up there aren't they like yeah. just the promotion seems to nail everything that they're, they're doing up there like i think that like january schedule that's there there's like mm. there's like hundreds of thousands of dollars getting paid out there <laughs> like it's just it's just wild like and they're doing it across multiple like not yeah well categories but like you know there's a lot of money in sedans up there too mm. as well as sprint cars and stuff too so they're sort of really capturing sort of both sides of speedway sort of thing because sedans and sprint cars People don't really cross Mixed, over. No, no they're sort of <laughs> different they run, breeds. They, they, they run their own lanes, kind of thing, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that something you want to do? Mod sedan? Oh, uh, 
I don't know. If I got an opportunity, sure, I'll try it out. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd approach someone for it, but if someone came to me, I'm sure we could put something together. <laughs> oh, man. They're pretty big for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Imagine my little seat in that. Yeah. Jesus, get lost. Well, I mean, if you want to have a crack at a late model, like... Yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. not? Why not, exactly? Yeah, so you, you're open to it. So, you, you, essentially, you're just a racer, aren't you? Like you're Yeah. The, you're and I'm a Speedway fan. Yeah. I'd, I'd watch anything on the hill. Um, but yeah, I'd like to run anything. Yeah. So you're not, you're not fast by it? No, I'm not biased. No. <laughs> I just like going in circles. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> the more laps <laughs> I get, the better I'm going to get, I guess. Yeah. You see Kyle Larson, he's running anything and everything now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's running that like UMP mod. And <laughs> yeah, I saw that stuff. the other day. I was like, yeah. what? <laughs> yeah. They're, I don't know. They're their own, um, they're their own breed <laughs> themselves, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. I think the only thing he probably hasn't ran would be like a big block modified. Mm, like pretty much. Other than other than that, I'm, still got time. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure someone would like want him to run a big dollar show or something like that. Yeah. But I'm assuming so he's late model, and then everything open wheel. Yeah. yeah. So he's, he's pretty much ticked off like everything. Yeah, everything that there is. Like yeah. So it must just be like big block. I don't. Yeah, I can't what, name any others what else really. Is there? I can't <laughs> imagine he's going to jump in like one of their street stock things or yeah something like that. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure in America there, there's probably somewhere that there's a hundred thousand dollar street stock show somewhere. Surely, like, there would be for sure. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's it seems to be paying dividends for him though, doesn't it? Like, oh yeah, definitely. Like, do you think it's weird too? Like, so did you grow up watching him? Um, I wouldn't say I really grew up watching him, but you'd always know his name. Like, yeah. it's kind of hard not to know his name in this industry. Yeah, <laughs> so it's kind of weird that you see like NASCAR people saying that he's gone like back to dirt whereas it's like the dirt guys are like no he's like he, he went to nascar sort of thing it's yeah not like, like he is the dirt man yeah he's, he's a dirt guy it's not like he's coming back down or anything like that it's yeah. like you know and that's where like especially with how professional some of the like world of outlaw teams are mm. like you can't say that it's you know like it's back end racing or anything like that yeah like it's just it's super high tier heaps of money on the line like <laughs> you know it's like you look at the rigs too. Like you look at mm. what the haulers are. Oh my god! You know they're the, money in themselves. <laughs> the, the haulers are on point with like what the NASCAR stuff's running anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. So what, what do you guys got? You got you got an enclosed trailer, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Got an enclosed trailer. I guess the haulers don't win the races, and rather put money into the race cars. Yeah. I guess uh, not too fancy. <laughs> yeah. You obviously don't need something huge for like the five hundred or one of these anyway. No, I just got to fit the car in the quad. Um, yeah, we, we're a family-run team, so we don't have a lot of backing. Um, a lot of our stuff is really sponsors, so it's not exactly we're going to go out and ball a, buy a hauler tomorrow. It's just family little team, hopefully making something out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's sort of... That's the, like, the good thing about Speedway too, though. That's <laughs> something that like I love too is like, you know, you know, you do see guys running, you know, well, probably not... You know, maybe guys in street stocks have got open trailers and stuff like that, or wingless and stuff like that. But, you know, it's like you still see those guys putting up a fight kind of thing or, like, <laughs> putting away the guys that have got the big flash gear and stuff like that too. Like, that's what's so good about our racing. Oh, yeah. I love seeing an underdog. Um, like, whenever you run, up, run to, like, a speed car show, like, you'd see one massive hole in the rest of the trailers. Like, we're not all made of money, I guess, and we're all running off sponsors, so... I think it's cool when you do see a hole, you're like, wow, they're flash. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in Australia, like, you mainly just see sprint car teams. So, obviously, when you go to America, some of them have got pretty flash rigs, obviously, you'll see every night. But over here, you don't see as many of them, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I always find it funny, too, the way the um, categories, like, run different stuff. Like, you get, like, the late model and the super sedan guys all seem to have buses. Oh, yeah. All, all do, sedan they, guys. They, they all have buses. They all do a bus and then it's like, it's just like, they're the only guys who do it. Yeah. It's, it's so, I don't know. I've always found that funny. It's like, yeah. 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 You know what? Mum and dad bought a bus and it had like the drop back like on it and we we're going to run that. And I was like, I'm not being a sedan guy. Like, <laughs> nah, mum and dad were all for it. They're like, yeah, look, we'll set up a kitchen over here. That didn't even make one race meeting. Like they sold it in the off season. <laughs> it was too much work. But... Buses look cool, I guess. I don't know. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to um, end up in a, well, a good bus. <laughs> <laughs> a good <laughs> like, one. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've, I think all that sort of stuff's come so far now too. Like even 
like haulers and stuff like that too, mm. you know, like the living quarters that are in them and stuff like that now. Like, you know, all that stuff's just gone absolutely mental. Like, mm, you know, yeah. obviously the dollars sort of follow with it too. But, yeah, I mean, like that whole – have you ever seen, like, the van life stuff? Yeah. Are, like – they're like houses on wheels. Yeah, I know. They're like so smart in the way that they, you know, yeah, design how they them. fit everything yeah, in. Yeah, all it's that crazy. sort of stuff too. So it's like, you know, maybe having a bus isn't such Too bad. bad. <laughs> you know, it saves on hotels and all that sort of stuff mm. too. Like, yeah, you know, you camp out the night before, you just drive and pull over and stuff like that. Yeah, might put some bunks in the trailer maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe bus isn't such a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I maybe, think I've changed Sinan's, now. Maybe sedan guys are the ones who are smart. Yeah, like, maybe like, we're all behind. Yeah, <laughs> maybe all the open wheel guys have got it wrong. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's paying stupid money for hotels every day. Literally. Yeah. Go buy a bus. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is kind of funny. Like, that. So have you even got, you got your L's? Yeah, yeah. I got my L's. Yeah. Um, when did I get my L's? I got my L's last year in July. Um. I turn 17 next week, so in Victoria, you can't get your piece till you're 18, which is stupid. Every other state in Australia is 17, yeah. so got another year to go, and then yeah. I'll be on the roads on my own. <laughs> yeah. So can you tow on your LV? So you can't even drive. I can't do anything. So you can't even drive yourself to the track. No. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, right. It sucks. <laughs> yeah, so that's where the family deal has to <laughs> come back into it. I can't have fights with mum and dad, otherwise I'm stuck at home. I'm not racing. <laughs> yeah, right. So... Have you ever felt, like, pressure, like, you know, being Andy's daughter as a racer? Like, you know, is there any, you know, has anyone ever tried to compare you to um, him or anything like that? Or No one's tried to compare us yet. I guess you just get the old jokes, like, oh, she drives better than you, Andy, and all that. And, you know, oh, you're Showtime's daughter. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like... I'm just going to go out and be myself. Like, even, even with my pops, you know, you get the whole, oh... You know, you're related to Fly and, oh, look, this is Wayne Pierce. Is, you know, it's just like, I'm just myself. I'll just go out and get my results and make my own name out of it. But it's still good to have that family behind you. But I still want to be known as Zoe Pierce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's sort of like such a hard thing. There's so much history there. Like, it's not like, it's not like any of those guys just didn't do anything in the sport and just, <laughs> you know, just you know raced here and there it's like you know mm. they've all accomplished stuff in the sport sort of thing so it's like yeah it is a good thing to have in one sense but yeah i suppose oh, i mean it's not like the pressure yeah if there was super amount of pressure mm. on there for you to be it's like you know yeah that's what i always think about like lasting with his son like yeah that oh kid. i feel so bad for owen that poor kid <laughs> like you know yeah you can almost see that kid packing it in one day and just being yeah. like you know you can obviously see that he's gonna be a real race or anything yeah. but yeah did you watch the dirt yeah. yeah yeah see that's when it like when um larson's and kyle's dad was talking about owen and everything and how the little daughter might be the racer as well i was like oh it's kind of cool but it's still like they got that name like they've always going to be like kyle larson kyle larson like you're never going to be known as just owen yeah it's like there's poor kids <laughs> yeah it is a it happens in like all forms of sport though I yeah suppose. like even footy players yeah. and everything like you're always going to be compared. I mean, you can't take that in a bad way either, like, because they did make good history. Like, you've got to be proud of that too. But it's also, like, you're always going to have that over your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose, um, like, I, I suppose your dad's got, like, lap records around the joint still and stuff like that too, so. Yeah, probably. So I, I don't suppose, know. I, I know he's got a SA track championship. <laughs> um, he's got Avalon. So there's some results I need to get. Yeah, <laughs> try and, yeah. <laughs> Not to compare, but yeah, start, yeah. <laughs> start, start putting your name on them as well. Yeah, even yeah. Vic titles. Both my pops won Vic titles, so I have to get one of those. Yeah. At least one. Yeah. Is that in, in speaker? Or yeah, yeah, both in speakers. Poppy Fly got three and um, my other pop, Big Pop, Wayne Pierce, he got one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dad got zero. <laughs> we'll skip a generation. Oh, well, it's just... The way it rolls. <laughs> yeah, not my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. So, do you know do pops ever give you pointers now, or are they? <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do. Um, I can't say I ignore it, but I sort of do because it's sort of like okay, that was back in the eighties and nineties, and I don't think that's really going to work nowadays. And they'll, you know, they'll do the old sneaky oh. Try and get pushed off first so then, like, you're up front of the other three cars and the pilot, you know, all those sneaky little hints. But that's really it. Not so much the driving thing. They know I like to be left alone on race day. I think every driver sort of does like their alone time to sort of get focused, you know. But, 
yeah, it's good to have them around and good to still have them around on the team and help out when they can and get to travel around with us sometimes as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, pretty cool. Like, so you do a lot of travelling from here, like, just in general? Like, yeah. what's your closest track to here? Uh, Avalon. I think that's an hour and a half. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and they they would run 500s frequently anyway, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, like, with formulas, it's more down, like, Warnable Way. You run Warnable, Portland, Lang, Hamilton. Um, did I say Horsham? I don't think so. You know, all that down district way. So, um, I think really I need to move down there. Cause it seems like all the tracks are down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suppose because um, Lang runs five hundreds a lot, don't they? Yeah. yeah, not not as much as they used to, but like mainly Speed Week, and I have a couple Stampede series there here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems um, five hundreds are just so strong in Victoria compared oh. to uh, they'd be the strongest in the country. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So is that sort of why you want to maybe jump? Yeah, down? I reckon. Uh, yeah, like at a club show, you're getting B mains like Simpson. The amount of cars they get, like it's just good. And they're quality fields. Like you never know who's going to win. Like you're standing in the crowd and you're like, i got no idea who's going to win this because just even Simpson, like they just produce the best racing for them as well. They can just run top and bottom, you know. Sometimes in the formulas they can just be like on the bottom and a bit boring, but like just the fields they get and the quality, I think it's just really good to try and mingle with them if I could get another ride in one. <laughs> yeah. So you'd be keen for a, like a double duty night then? Maybe? Oh, yeah. Especially if they got non-wing going. Lang, non-wing, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, that'd be... um. <laughs> Dad's in the background shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that um, yeah, the whole non-wing thing sort of seems to be becoming something maybe in Australia. Yeah, it's kicking off a little bit. Yeah. I'd love to get up to Lake Liddell. Like everyone you talk to, I've never heard anything bad about it. They all say how badass it is, and then you hear all the guys saying, "Oh, I love um non-wing stuff." So it's sort of like, come over to our side. Like, come be a speed car driver. You get to do that nearly every weekend. Like. And they're all travelling up like 17 hours to Lake Liddell. Like, come run a speed car at Avalon one night and just try it out and try and bring them over to our side, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, so they're so strong. Like, at least, I don't know. I think if they had non-wings, some people might do double duty as well. Just, I think it'd open more feelers up for speed cars. Just a thought. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, there's obviously some reason as to why they don't do it. It's probably insurances or <laughs> Something along those lines, I'm yeah. sure, as to why they can't take the wings off in more places, like, mm. which I think is just, yeah. just do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's, it doesn't necessarily have to be another whole category. Yeah. Like, you can just run non-wing nights or, you know, yeah. it's not like, it doesn't have to, you know, stupid thing in Speedway, get out of, <laughs> get out of hand, which, yeah. you know, things tend to do, but, mm. yeah. Like, I mean, have like a Saturday night wing night at Lang and then Sunday Arvo have a non-wing day. Why not? There you go. <laughs> there yeah. you go. I just planned see, it all yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, do you follow the stuff at, like, Millbridge? Yeah, I follow a bit of it. Yeah. Um, Not die hard, but, yeah, like, Wednesday night Millbridge nights seem pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, like, they run, like, and there's a lot of different categories, like, motor and stuff like that, too. But yeah. There's, like, there's Stock and outlaw and yeah. winged, unwinged. <laughs> yeah, and then all the different, like, stuff in between it and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. It seems to work a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, that's somewhere that I definitely want to get. Oh, that looks so cool. Just for, like, Wednesday night is wild. Yeah. And, like, the names they get there. Like, Chad Boat's there, like, every Wednesday, I reckon. Like, it's cool. Like, yeah. Obviously, it's obviously a good track if you're getting those sort of guys there every Wednesday. I can't remember who it was. Someone there the other day flew in at the last minute to run there. Oh, really? I can't remember who it was. And then they were driving down the road to run another track they were driving in between heats <laughs> like 30 wow. 30 miles I can't, I can't remember i've seen it on um do you watch dirt tracker daily no oh, i don't that's, i haven't heard of that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's something you gotta that guy he does like generally about like an eight minute clip every day on oh. like speedway world because obviously like, i need to get onto that yeah <laughs> obviously like america run you know five nights a week kind of thing mm. so every night or every day after he has like a wrap on the day before oh that's cool yeah we need more of that yeah he's got <laughs> 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 yeah he's so he like he's 
all the inside gossip, all that sort of stuff too. So he, he was saying that someone was running between Millbridge and somewhere else on the same night, Jesus. running between heats and like, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was even different cars. I can't, yeah. I can't remember what it was. That's so, crazy. Yeah. So that was a pointless story. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. Yeah. <laughs> so you're obviously like super keen on Speed Week that's coming. Yeah, um, that'll be really good. Um, I think it'll be really good for speed cars in general. Um, I hope they get a quality field. I hope they get the car counts they're hoping for. Um, I think they'll get a lot of backing from it. I don't think there's anything really like it for speed cars at the moment in Australia. So, And it's good that it's sort of down the road for us compared to other teams. So, um, Got some knowledge at the tracks as well, so that'll be good. I'm really looking forward to going back to Portland again. Last time I went there, I got a feature win in the formulas, so... Portland's just cool track. I like it. I think it'll be good produced racing for the speed cars. Um, and yeah, I'll get to mix with some more of the top Australian teams in the speed car world. Yeah. So obviously, Domain Ramsey gave you your first crack in a speed car. Yeah. So. Um, very grateful for him. Um, and then obviously, was very, very grateful for him at the Australian title, letting us take his car to compete in that. Without him, I wouldn't have been there. But it was really cool to be able to debut in a different car, not Dad's car, I guess. Um, it's just cool to be able to say I did sort of my own deal, you know, not just a family deal. Um, and then obviously I did the Anzac Salute at um, Avalon and then I did Simpson the night after in Domain's car as well. Um, he seems to be happy. I think we're having a good time. I think he just likes having fun and running his race cars. So we'll do something with him again next year, and I'm really looking forward to that. It's good to have a car owner, I guess you'd say. <laughs> yeah, it's all, like, top-quality gear, too, I'm yeah. assuming. Like, yeah. So who's, who throws the spanners at that when you go to that? Um, Dad and Domain. Yeah. You know, they, not so much when Domain's running the sprint cars because, you know, we just let him do his own thing. Dad will put a turn here and there, and then when we took it to Eastern Creek, obviously that was our sort of deal because yeah. he didn't come. Yeah, yeah, so he's um, yeah, I know he's done a lot for the sport. Hasn't he? <laughs> he's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> he's really good for it. Yeah, no, that's cool that you hopefully jump back in that and yeah. So do you think there was a little bit of less pressure jumping in that first time, not being the like family car? Not so much pressure. I just felt good to I don't know, not say I kicked Dad out of the seat. You know, he he was actually nominated for that night and he chose to step away from it. I was like, come on, let's do a. Let's do a one and a two. Let's both race on my debut. And he's like, no, I want to focus on you. So I was like, whatever. So I think that was good. And being able to work with different people as well. Um, I think that's really good as a race car driver to be able to work with different people and be able to talk about your racing and how the setup was and how the track conditions was. Obviously, if I want to race all these different divisions, I've got to know how to do that and how to talk to other people than just my dad with my setup. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, like, you know, like, Talking to someone like Luke Dillon, where he jumps in and out of different, like, own, well, not different cars, but different, well, yeah, different cars, but different, like, teams <laughs> and stuff, and being comfortable straight from the get-go, and you've mm. got to be able to communicate and all that sort of stuff, it's, you know, it's extremely important. Yeah. Thing, like, and you've got to be honest, too. That's probably the, the biggest thing, too. Like, yeah. you've got to be honest with yourself and, you know, actually you know, say the honest stuff out loud, I suppose. Yeah. Like, not try and hide, hide from anything. <laughs> you can't or, hide that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm um, sure some car owner, car drivers would probably tell you straight up if they don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you, do you give extremely honest feedback? Um, I'm still working on my sort of trying to explain the track and how I drive. Obviously, Dad will see it different from the outside. Standing on the fence, he'll be like, you drove like this? And will be like, oh, well, I felt like this. And, you know, we bounce things off each other. Um, obviously, I'm still learning. Um, but, yeah, Dad normally does all my setups and he'll try and talk me through it. And I'm trying to learn everything just because if I am on my own one day, I need to learn how to set up my own car really if my car owner doesn't know what they're doing either yeah. <laughs> so yeah just trying to find where I'm at, where I'm comfortable what sort of car I like um what dad's told me apparently I like a tighter car so yeah just trying to bounce things off each other and trying to learn the setups as I go as well yeah right. I wonder if that comes from being such a small little <laughs> little frame that, <laughs> yeah you know, like, hang on <laughs> <laughs> yeah do, do you think that you know surely there's not any disadvantages to your size um i don't know <laughs> i gotta work on my arms definitely this off season um 
on those heavier tracks, you know. My arms got a little tired, so definitely got to work on those in the off-season. On a slick track, I was really good because I can hang on to it a lot easier, but on those heavier tracks, you know, there's no complaining that my arms were sore now, so we'll work on that. Because yeah. <laughs> where did you finish in your first night out in the speed car? You... Uh, I finished 11th. Did you? Oh, I thought you yeah. Yeah. yeah, just yeah. out of the top 10. Yeah, <laughs> so, but I mean, like, first night out, it's nothing to sneeze at. Oh. No, I was happy with that. Considering how I started out the night in hot laps, like looking back on it, whoa, I was I was running that thing like a formula, like that's not good. <laughs> but yeah, looking back at how I went in hot laps compared to the feature, I definitely improved just in hot laps and two heats and a feature. So I was happy with my first night out, um, took a lot from it. And then going to Murray Bridge, like I think it was like a week or two later, uh, maybe, no, I think it was a lot longer after that. And I started off pole for my first heat and I led like most of the laps until I got into the slick and just spun it out. But just going from running 11s to leading my first heat in this car was really a confidence boost until I let it go, I guess. <laughs> hey, so did you drive a speed car prior to that night at all anywhere or no? Nah, no? I... Oh, like I'd just sit in dad's, but I'd never actually had my seat in one, really. <laughs> yeah, so you didn't like go like do a test session anywhere or anything like that? No, no I just started Domain's car in the street after we put the seat in and that was it, just to learn the gear. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So just straight out in the hot straight laps. Straight out in the hot laps. Yeah. Bit scary, but, you know, I knew the race craft of it. It was just more getting used to the speed and throwing it into the corners. <laughs> yeah. What was it like putting the foot down for the first time with that much power? Um... It was definitely different. You know, you really feel your head going. <laughs> so that was different. But I don't know. I'd just say I had a smile on my face the whole time. This is cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. well, how much power does a Junior 500 make? I think about 120, 130, more, 90, 85. 85. There you go. Dad knows more than me. <laughs> 85. Hey. Yeah, right. 85. So you've yeah, jumped up like, you know. A lot. Yeah, yeah, a lot, like 300 <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think, yeah, that first outing was great. Right. Yeah, some positives to take, some not so positive. Uh, oh, now it's all coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> In my second heat, I rode a right rear. This is the story, right? I saw Caleb, I passed Caleb, and I was like, sweet, I've got him. Next minute, there's a right rear in front of me. I've just hit that and towards the front end, but I finished it, so I'm happy. Finished with a fourth place of my second day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. You probably haven't like. I suppose. Oh, you've have you raced against like Pickens and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, like, at um the Easter Show at Murray Bridge. Yeah. Which yeah. I thought that was cool. It's a photo of me and Michael Pickens on the grid. I was in front of him, so there's yeah. my fame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. I keep forgetting that you're like 16, so it's like you, know, <laughs> you haven't really raced against anyone that you've sort of been like starstruck or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. and I had um, Eastern Creek and Hot Laps. Teamers was behind me. I was holding him up. Yeah, yeah that's cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, you still got plenty of time to you know, yeah. get... But do you even care though? Like when you're out there, every car's the same to me. I'm not going. Oh look, look, there's Michael Pickens. Oh, yeah. I'm not fangirling over him. I'm just out there running my own race. I try to forget about the cars around me. Yeah. Otherwise, you can get too focused on and end up driving worse than you are. <laughs> yeah. Is you obviously like know every car around you, kind of thing. Like yeah, yeah. pretty much. Especially in Victoria. Yeah. Like it's sort of like oh yeah I've known you for years <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they've probably known me since I was tiny <laughs> yeah but like if a car comes up alongside you you know just by its colours or the you know you'll, yeah. you'll pick something on it straight yeah, away yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah it's crazy I was actually tripped out at like how much teammates could pick up on all that sort of stuff yeah because like he, he obviously didn't know names but he could be like you know you'd say a, a colour of a car or a number and he'd be like oh yeah that that one yeah like, that one know, yeah it's just <laughs> crazy how that sort of stuff all comes back and yeah. yeah the one thing that trips me out about races is the the stuff that they remember like lap after lap yeah like I, it blows my mind like <laughs> I, I can't remember shit that i did like an hour ago <laughs> and then like you know guys talk about oh yeah 1998 heat two of like so, it's like man like what yeah like yeah i won't remember what i had for lunch but i remember like an aussie title from 10 years ago <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah like like as like watching them yeah, or just like some past winners. Not like every single year, but you know, if I've been to one, I'd be like, oh yeah, that bloke won that year. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So, yeah. 
I mean, you're 16, but you've been around it legitimately <laughs> your whole life already, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. literally. Yeah. All my 16 years I've been to a racetrack. <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know how old were you before you went to your first one? Mm. Months. Five, five months, five there months. you go. I was born in July, so there you go. There's a couple months there. Got a couple months without <laughs> it, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So, something on the sort of USAC horizon is definitely definitely the end, end goal or is there like something that you want to win Aussie that's above it or? Yeah, I'd like to win a lot in Australia. <laughs> definitely a big title, Australian championships on the line as well um obviously i just got to start getting some results into me first but yeah the end goal is to race in america i think that's where all the tracks lead to yeah so do you like you know you're, you're you've been around racing enough to know too that like the professional race is not all it's cracked up to be as well so <laughs> is that like you know you you've started a hairdressing apprenticeship yeah. yeah um i turn second year next week yeah right. <laughs> yeah so you you know you're sort of smart enough there in the first place, but you know, being a professional race car driver's yeah, I feel like getting a trade under me young is good. So then, if all that like professional race car driver doesn't work out, at least I get a trade to fall on instead of going oh, so yeah, I'm washed up after a year and I've got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working at IGA next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it's definitely the smart way of going about it, sort of thing. Like you don't mm. want to end up with nothing if it <laughs> for whatever reason it doesn't work out yeah pretty, pretty confident <laughs> will work out for you hoping <laughs> so are you sort of putting a like a, a timeline on like you know you do you want to get over there in the next couple of years to like test the waters out or yeah um so we're going over there in november um just to follow some of the um western usac swing so we got one night at bakersfield i think Three nights of Placerville, two nights of Merced, and then we're doing Turkey night. Um, so I'm crewing for Shannon McQueen over that time. So hopefully I can learn some things off her and make some connect connections over there. I think it's good to do that now as I'm just coming through the ranks, as you'd say, doing my apprenticeship. So I think that'll be good just to get my name out there a little bit, make some connections, and then hopefully in a couple of years I can go back and, um, yeah, do some racing over there myself. Yeah. So how, how did you reach out to them? Um, so Shannon McQueen came over here a couple of years ago for the Australian title. And um, yeah, I sort of took a liking to her and Michelle Decker just because I'd never really seen girl speed car races out here, I guess you say. And they're Americans. Like who doesn't like go, oh my God, Americans when they come out. Like they're cool. So I think we sort of like dad sort of stayed in contact with her a bit. And then like following... Like social media, going back to that, like it's just so easy to stay connected with yeah. people. Um, so, yeah, just uh, following her stuff and then she's sort of remembered us and she's been looking at some of my stuff. So it was just a bit of, you know, text to text. <laughs> yeah, it's like easy, isn't it? It's so easy. It's e yeah, 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 it's fun. Yeah, it goes back to like what we were saying before, eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. So what's, that's November. So are you going to miss any racing here? I or? think we miss one Murray Bridge show. Yeah. So. That's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, to get the experience of, of like, going over there and, and doing that. It's, yeah, it's it would be of, really cool. <laughs> it's sort of worth it. Yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, interesting. So then, you know, you obviously – I mean, it's sort of – the one thing that I always think about too, like, you don't have to go over there and run a USAC show. No. You know, you can always sort of hang around in, like, you know – I don't know, it is lower, but, like, you know, something like badges yeah. or something like that. You know, you can always go over there and sort of go on They're the still radar. cool too. <laughs> still put on great racing and stuff like that yeah so there's plenty of stuff that you could sort of you know go over there and experience it without you know going to a USAC show first up or something like that like, yeah you know you just gotta I don't know yeah make those contacts <laughs> or you know just talk to people really talk, yeah. <laughs> just go up ask about their car and talk to them <laughs> get, get on the phone and yeah yeah, yeah it's a, um, get their Instagram off them or something <laughs> yeah that's, that's like it's such a big thing of it now mm. like yeah i follow a lad um i follow him and i just forgot his name but yeah he, <laughs> he runs the badger stuff and it's like you know even some of that stuff's you know ultra professional in itself yeah. like you know so some of those probably have holers oh for sure <laughs> like, the amount of nights that they're spending on the yeah, road over there too yeah definitely so you know that's the other thing too that you can you know go over there for like a a month or two months and you know basically run your australian season 
in mm. that in that time. time yeah, frame. So, really. Mm. Yeah. So, especially with the micro stuff that's over there too. Ugh, just everything over there. They're running like every night, except for like a Monday or a Tuesday. Like, yeah. They well, never have a break. Well, I know the late model stuff, they run Monday nights and stuff like that. They're not... Yeah. They're not afraid to, you know... I've, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It, might, it has, surely has to do sometimes with the like as to where they're traveling for the obviously the Friday yeah. Saturday nights the bigger night. So it depends on if it's on the way or something. On the maybe. way, like you know, they, it's just the way they run the shows too. People know that you know it's just late models or just spring cars, and it's, <laughs> you know they're there for a couple of hours and they're happy to do it. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. I'm um, I keen to see if you can get over there. And, you know. Yeah, years will tell, I guess. Still sixteen, so. I'm interested too to see how my career ends up. <laughs> I wish I had a teleport to see how I ended up, but <laughs> anyway, I got to start getting some results first and then see how I end up. <laughs> yeah, it's um, you know, you're only just starting out. Yeah, I know. And it seems it seems so weird because it's like you have been around so long in some regards. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, it's like yeah, and you've already like you know you are starting to make a name for yourself and everything like that. So yeah. I'm trying to anyway, <laughs> especially on the social media. I feel like that's a big part in motorsport nowadays. Like anything you see on social media can go a long way. Like it's literally worldwide. Like some random guy in America could see it and go, oh, look, I'm mates with this team owner. Like get this girl out. Like you don't know how far it can really go with just one post. Yeah. Do you run your own <laughs> social media? Um. Yeah, pretty much. Um. I do a lot of like the photo editing and making all those designs and that and then um, mum or dad would normally do the write-ups for me because I'm 16. I do write-ups not so professionally. <laughs> yeah. I, I use have, some slangs in that. <laughs> have you ever, like, done a deep dive into the stats and stuff like that? Do you look at um, any of that sort of stuff or...? Not really. I'd say more mum does that sort of stuff, you know, now and then they'll be like, oh, that one got a lot of likes. I guess I'll post more photos like that. Like, you sort of weigh it up like that. Yeah. Um, but obviously when you get results, you get a lot of likes, so that's pretty much the goal to get results. Yeah, because when you start, like, diving into the data, like, you can break it down into, like, age groups and countries yeah. and, like, all that sort of stuff. Like, it gets... It gets it get, real deep. It gets, like, pretty gnarly, like, and, you know, obviously a lot of sponsors want to know all that sort of stuff now, too. They, yeah. They want to know your demographic and, your, you know, your whole metadata package and stuff like that, too. Yeah, so. like, on a sponsor proposal, we'd put, like, the amount of, like views or shares or whatever it gets and likes and interactions i think that's what it is yeah, yeah put that on there just because um you know we tag our sponsors in every post we do so they're getting their little publicity out of it and they like it because they're on every single post we do yeah yeah and it's such a like it's a free platform to use essentially <laughs> yeah. too like it doesn't you free know, advertising <laughs> yeah it doesn't really cost you anything to to run a facebook page or anything like that mm. like i i'm just amazed at how some guys don't do it or some guys put so little effort into it yeah i oh. really think that hurts them really like there's so much you could get out of it like even just with my um instagrams and facebooks and everything and i got a tiktok now tiktok's really taken off if you want that younger age like get on there like you'll post like a flipping video and you get so many likes just because you're like wow that's so cool <laughs> it's like you just get so many views out of so many random people you never thought you would really <laughs> yeah right yeah i'm not, not, <laughs> not going on tiktok I'm, no i've run enough social media <laughs> stuff it's like i'm it's, young it's enough to yeah it's too much already so you know, <laughs> between yeah it is like funny though like looking at the data from like youtube to like facebook and stuff like that too like it's just you know there's so much data there to look at that you can see how guys especially like big youtuber guys can like manipulate their yeah. audience and stuff like that like you know and i mean besides buying all the gear it's not really costing you anything mm. to do anything like, yeah so it's yeah. good <laughs> yeah. so you look at like doing anything more social media wise or um i like to do more of the youtube stuff i did maybe one or two videos last season and then on race night, you sort of forget to sort of film everything and film everything you're talking. I've tried to tell mum to sort of do it behind the scenes and she forgets too because she's busy on the tools as well. So it's sort of next season, hopefully, we can try and do a little bit more of that, a um, little bit more of the interviews, um, try and do more of the stuff that you don't really see that people want to see and then also show the bad as well because you see some 
um, social media platforms, they only post their good results. Like that's when you see them all come out. So it's yeah. sort of like when you post on that bad stuff so they know it's not always a good time here. <laughs> yeah. But it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It's, um, and it's sort of weird too because you're going to get like non-Speedway people watching that as well as like the Speedway people watching. Yeah. You can really like captivate both sort of sides there. Yeah, like, and then you can turn them in the fans and you bring more people to the Speedway and then just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Maybe get some sponsors in there. Like, it's just, again, free advertisement. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, depending on what you're doing, it's a free, they're all free platforms to use. Yeah. Like, which is good. You don't have to, like, sponsor every post or <laughs> yeah. everything like that. Like, yeah. I mean, you could if you wanted to. Yeah. But I don't think there's really much need to do every post. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Can't say I've ever done one. <laughs> nah, for some other, like, non car stuff. Non, well, non speedway stuff I've done, I've done it and it just killed a page. So, really? <laughs> yeah, because like once you've sponsored it, it's like Facebook's expecting that. So it's Aww. like, yeah, it's a, you got to try and grow it organically. And then like algorithms just are always constantly changing and stuff yeah. like that. Too. So it's like, it's, you know, it's forever like, I don't know, everything's just always changing on it too. So you're always <laughs> going to stay like relevant and yeah, it's, I don't know. It's such a weird. It's such a good thing, and it's such a weird thing at the same yeah. time too. So, yeah, it's yeah. um, yeah. You've got to do it though. I think. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. So you wouldn't have done like Rising Stars program or anything like that. No, no, no. I didn't. No. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> I like, think we looked into it, but yeah. I don't think I ever got there. Yeah, because I know that they taught like a lot of that sort of stuff. Yeah, too, a lot so. of the media and the fitness stuff. So I think that would have been good for me, but. I don't know. I think we did look into it, but I think around the time it was like COVID or yeah. I wasn't old enough or there's something going on. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. The good old, good old COVID. <laughs> yeah. Direct everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nothing's sort of been the same since that. So, no. Yeah. It really hasn't. <laughs> yeah. So you, you obviously help out in the shed yourself. You're not afraid to like throw spanners at yourself. Get my hands yourself. dirty. Yeah. No. No. Um, a lot this sort of off season, I haven't been able to help as much just because of work. I'm working late nearly every night except for Monday, Tuesday. So, and I'm working Saturdays now. So, it does get a bit hard to get out here and help Dad. But pretty much the rule used to be if you're not out here working, nothing gets done on the car. So I always had to be out here if I wanted to race on the weekend. But um, I'm happy to be out here. I like to learn. Um, as I said before, I want to be able to set up my own car eventually. So. It's good. Um, I like to learn the parts of the car because I feel like that's how you get a feel for the car as well. So, yeah, I'll come out when I can and help Dad. Obviously, we load up together, do everything together on the race cars. So, sort of how, how far off from building a car on your own? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't put a timeline on it because, I don't know, I guess you could say I'm a slow learner with um, building speed cars. I don't know. I seem to take it in I'll remember it for a day and then I'll forget it again and then I'll have to relearn it and I'm not too good with it I definitely need to up my game <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say I know how to take my seat out <laughs> what, in case you get sacked or something <laughs> <laughs> in case I get a call up tomorrow <laughs> yeah you're missing all right thanks so this has been good yeah thank you <laughs> um, we'll see you see you around the traps and yeah, yeah. all the best for the next season yeah, thank you for having me. No, no, no. <laughs>